What's up, guys? Your boy Brad here with Josh, and we are going to do the Gold Boys NFL preview for the Denver Broncos. First, I want to thank our sponsors, Pickett and Sleeper, for allowing us to do this. Josh, I'm excited to talk about this. I uh, I think I'm more excited because of how much Sean Payton is flapping his gums. It's Hollywood TV. What do you think about this team? Uh, give me some bets. Give me some thoughts. I mean, my first thought is is what I was talking about on our Gold Boys live show there, 1 p.m. Eastern every weekday, uh, that he wasn't this interesting when he was on television as an analyst. Like, why couldn't yeah. he say interesting things then? Now he starts going crazy. I, the confidence is probably high in Denver. I think that kind of breeds that level of, of braggadociousness. <laughs> so we'll see if they can back it up. Like, I'm excited to talk, too, because my first thought was like, where can I fade this team? Russell Wilson looked so bad last year that I'm ready to just continue riding his unders. Um, yes. Is that a, his passing prop? It, just to bring it up real quick, is at 3,750 yards on DraftKings. And he's just like 200 yards shy of that last year. I think Joe Lombardi and, and Sean Payton combined are probably worth 200 yards uh, over the course of a season, especially if anybody around on the wide receiver court can stay healthy. Judy had a nice year last year. So anyway, I, I'm looking at kind of that stuff. Maybe we should start with like some of the team stuff and, and go through that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about some team stuff, but I want to kind of touch on what you said initially before we move too far away from it. I think it's funny because I think people automatically go to the Denver Broncos and Sean Payton actually. And they say Sean Payton's going to air the ball out. Right. Um, but the Denver Broncos actually look like a team that could be set up to run the ball a ton. They tried to bolster that offensive line, which was god awful last year. They have Javante Williams, Samaj P. Ryan. They can run the ball if they want to, or if that is their philosophy. So I think I'd probably be under on Russell uh, Russell Wilson's passing yards. But let's let's talk about their uh, their team total first. Um, All right, yeah, let's get into it. But let's put a let's put a pin in that because I actually have something to go back with that as well. Yes, we'll touch um, back. On that. We'll, we'll we'll get right back into that because I do like the, the the pickups that they made in the off season with the guards. Uh, McGlinchey was amazing. His first yes. bunch of seasons there for the Niners, and then they also got the best name ever for a guard in Powers. Yes, uh, they're now going to be having you know that 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 offensive line now is nice, right? I mean, yes, just those two dudes. It's like two of the best pickups for sure so far. So. Um, I, yeah, the, 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 the problem is, is Javante Williams healthy because he yes. tore like every relevant muscle in his knee last year. Sean Payne did say he's like, well, I think he, he could play in game one still seems like even if he is like, how athletic is he going to be compared to the, the dude, you know, who, who was able to run all over the place last year? Um, at least for a little bit so I, the eight and a half wins if you want to start there like yeah. that's their team total i gotta go under despite how much i think they might be a bit better on offense they also have a brutal schedule in in one of the top two three best divisions in, in the league right yeah no they have a pretty brutal schedule uh they won five games last year and we're expecting them to make this night and day difference um let's talk about what sean payton said about this team when he was uh kind of riding on hackett uh basically he said this team's been beaten to death you know everyone beat the the explicitive out of them. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be hard to make that year over year change in one year, but let's remember uh, in his first year with the saints uh, that he brought them to become a 10 win team back in 2006, but let's look at their schedule, right? We think about the Raiders. They start off with the Raiders. They start off with uh, the commanders. That could be two wins. Could be. Great. They start the season off two and zero, oh, but then they have to travel to Miami. That's when things start to get real. That's their first true test. Then they go to Chicago it's not necessarily that I'm worried about them playing Chicago. It's back-to-back -back games on the road in a one o'clock hour, like mm -hmm. that sleepy time zone. I mean, that sleepy game time where it's going to be one of those one o'clock windows where you say, how are the Broncos losing to the, to, to the, to the bears? And then there's, it's not like their schedule gets any easier. Then they invite the jets. Then they have to go to Kansas city arrowhead and play prime time against the chiefs. Then they invite Green Bay and then play the Chiefs again, oh right? You think, oh, man, if that wasn't enough, yeah. then they get a bye week. Whew. Let's relax. Let's relax. Let's rest. Then it gets even more difficult with three tough games uh, in Buffalo, Buffalo versus Minnesota, then versus Cleveland. Um, yeah. It gets a little bit easier to end the season. But, I mean, if you start this, if you don't, if you don't win those first two games, there's no way they get to, to nine wins. Yeah, I think that's fair because – they could they they would be in jeopardy like from basically from Miami in week three to Minnesota or let's even say Cleveland in yes. week twelve. 
that could be two wins in that time frame. Like if they, they got to win that bears game and like maybe that, that Packers or depending on how the Browns shape up that by that point in the season, yes. maybe they're beatable, but like not really much else going on there for them in terms of being beatable when they welcome Minnesota, that could be an interesting game. It's a Sunday night game as well. Um, so I think yep. that would be pretty interesting, but finding nine wins is tough. Now, look, when you get to Houston, I don't think they, they're better than the chargers or the lions. And you, yeah, no, nah, honestly, man, between the, the, the Vegas game, maybe they, they're better than the, the Pats this year. Like they're yeah. probably to me about as good as the new England Patriots, who we also both like to fade uh, them not doing very well this season. So I, I, as a team that's comparable there, I think I got to go under on the wins and I'm really, there's nothing else there in terms of Super Bowl, like 50 to one division, no. seven to one AFC winning that three to uh, 30 to one in the same odds for the AFC one seed. If they were to you know win that one seed 30 to one, nothing there doing everything I would hit. There is a no, 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 no bet. If I had it right. I think this is a good possibility. I think this is a good possibility where you can kind of play both. You can kind of double down on yourself. You play them under eight and a half wins to start the season. And then if you can get a live line, if they start two and O, you can get a live line when they repost them. You can easily play under again because we're yeah. gifting them two wins to start the season. Very um, let I, I want to talk about. You said there's no words that you like. I, I do want to talk about one that I like. Um, I already gave this one out, and I'm going to stick with it. It's Marvin Mims, offensive rookie of the year, yep. um, like uh, 100 to one. We've heard Sean Payton talk about it, but even without the coach speak, let's ignore the coach speak for a little bit. What Marvin Mims brings to this team is is, is something that you can't you can't just call on any guy to do a guy who can blow the top off a guy who can catch the ball underneath, not afraid to catch on a, a guy who has elite speed and a yeah. guy who's played in a, let's say this becomes a pass happy system. Who's played in a pass, pass, pass happy system under two coaches who love to air the ball out two coaches who do really well in, in grooming wide receivers and quarterbacks. Yep. Um, so I like Marvin Mims at this price. I know he has a tough time behind Sutton uh, Patrick and Judy he also has to battle out uh, KJ Hamler and uh, Calloway. But from what I'm seeing, like he's going to get on the field. Yeah, and that's get a good shot. Yeah, yeah. And, and the guys that you just named get hurt. All the time. All the time is the problem. And and Corlin Sutton, um, Broncos fans are still like buying stock in him to be, you, you know what I mean, Ed McCaffrey yes. or something uh, yeah. or, or Rod Smith. And, and the thing is, is I don't uh, – the reason I like it even more to support you here is like Jerry Judy's going to play in the slot. Jerry is yes. going to get a ton. I mean, he's going to get 115, 120 targets. If he plays uh, 16, 17 games, he's going to get that many. Yep. He got a hundred targets in 15 games last year. So he's going to get a ton of targets this year. Um, and if he can catch, you know, what, 70% of them, especially if he's in the slot and they're, you know, a little bit shorter routes at times. Like yeah. I, I really, I like Judy a lot, I guess is what I'm starting with, but yes. it, he's not going to take snaps from Mims. From Marvin Mims. Exactly. Right. Mims is going to be out in that X out, area. Out, right. Yeah. And, and so he's going to be a little bit more able to, uh, to use that speed and stretch the field for them and make things a little bit more open for Jerry Judy underneath uh, as he gets crossing routes and then gets all that yak. So I, yeah. I really like that bet. And honestly, like I, I know we lean, uh, you know, you lean under for Russell Wilson's passing yards, but yeah. for Jer for Jerry Judy's passing yards, he's at eight seventy five and a half on uh, on Fanduel, eight seventy yeah. and a half. So like he he got that last year with playing fifteen games in an offense. Like I said, I do think Sean Payton and Joe Lombardi coming in. I mean, Payton will call the plays, I'm sure, but like Lombardi will yeah. be in his ear, and that's that was the success where they turned a bunch of dudes and wide receivers in the Saints to a lot better than they were because of Drew, obviously, you know, uh, Drew Brees ability to pass the ball around, but who does Russell Wilson get compared to more than anybody at this point? Right. Yeah, no, Local absolutely. Um, I, I want to, let's just touch on this real quick. What do we sure. think their win total ceiling is? I'm going to say 10 wins. If all goes right. Yeah. All goes um, right. If all goes right, that could be the case. Let me just count it off for you. Like if they beat Vegas twice, is that, is that, that, that would be part of that 10 wins, right? Yeah. Beat Vegas twice. Vegas twice. The commanders, the bears, the Packers. Yep. The Houston, or the, I'm sorry. The, the Texans for sure. Yeah. The Pats. What are we at now? We're at eight, uh, seven, seven. So then they got to, they, they have to be Houston too. Yeah, I got Houston in there. So, is that oh, so we're at eight. Yeah. Okay. So they need two more wins there out of, you know, there's winnable games in there. Yeah. They get, I mean, the, the Chargers twice. I don't Split. love it for them. But, Split you know, the Chargers. They're at Detroit. I don't love that for them, unfortunately. I think that might be an interesting game if both those offenses kind of come yep. to play. But 
10, 10, 10, 10 is the ceiling, my man, because I think that's like pie, pie in the sky, right? Listen, and this is a brutal stretch for them anyway because they have to go Houston, at Houston, at L.A., at Detroit. Exactly. Then they play on Christmas Eve, primetime, at home. Yep. That sounds like an ugly schedule. So let, I'm going to say my ceiling's nine. Yeah, that's that sounds more realistic because I don't even guarantee them two wins over Vegas, to be honest with you. No. Uh, in those division games as well. And, and the Chargers are going to be tough each time for them as well. So... Yeah, and honestly, like, yeah, the bear at the Bears, some people are like, wait, we got better, you know, some of those Bears. Yes. Fans, I don't know. You know, one one thing I will say before we, we take off that you got me thinking yes. about is, like, if if we like the idea of Vegas and Washington being two games that, like, let's say they win them, um, yes. or let's say they, they win the, the Vegas game right there, like, do they get overpriced at some point, bef- you know, before they lose a game, like, in, in that sense? I guess not, because they're playing Miami in, in the third week, right? Maybe if yeah. they're 2-1 and one and they come into Chicago and they look good, it might be a ripe opportunity to bet on the Bears if they're getting, like, near a yes. touchdown. You That's know? what I was thinking. If they start out 2-1 and one or 3-0, and oh, they're going to be overpriced heading into uh, Soldier Field, and yep. I would I would probably take the Bears. Probably be seven points. Uh, also it also depends is, on yep. how the Bears start. So. Yep, 100%. Yep, I like that. So we are going to, I think we're we're pretty sold on the team total wins under eight and a half. Guys, for Josh, I'm Brad Thomas. I want to thank you for tuning in to our Denver Broncos preview. Take care.